All of Cybertron is the perfect Transformers game. It has everything a fan could ask for. Great gameplay and level design, a dark and grim story, unforgettable music, and of course a game that truly captured the brutal war between the Autobots and Decepticons, which leads to the end of days of Cybertron. After eons of conflict, I finally see the truth of your words, Megatron. And what might that be, Optimus? This universe, no matter how vast, will never be big enough for you and I to coexist. However, in order to fully explain how incredible Fall of Cybertron was, let's jump back to the year 2010 and look at all the great titles that were released. Red Dead Redemption, Darksiders, Mass Effect 2, Alan Wake, Starcraft 2, Fallout New Vegas, Super Mario Galaxy, God of War 3, you know back when Kratos was ruthless and vicious and not all old and mature? Zeus! Your son has returned! I bring the destruction of Olympus! There was another game released back in 2010 that belongs on this list of incredible games that has also stood the test of time. The War for Cybertron. This game did to Transformers what Arkham Asylum did for Batman. Now you may be wondering why am I talking about the War for Cybertron and how it held its own in a year that was fierce with competition. Because I want you to know how great War for Cybertron was, how high the bar was set for Transformers games after its release, and how only two years later, yeah, Remember when we used to get video games released in a timely manner? How High Moon Studios made a sequel that topped it. Did War for Cybertron, we really had something to prove in terms of, yes, Transformers games can be good. With Fall of Cybertron, it's not trying to prove to you whether Transformers games can be good. It really is to show you how great they can actually be. This is one of those games where when you boot it up, you could sit here at the starting screen and simply listen to the music. you can already feel how epic this game is going to be. The music is just so unforgettable. The gameplay is so much fun and it constantly switches things up so it never becomes boring and stale. The story, the story is dark and relentless while at the same time hopeful and exciting. It's a title that just fully packs a punch. The game opens up to this awesome scene where we see our boys, the Autobots, flying through space with Decepticons right on their tail. And all of a sudden, boom, they board the ship, causing this really big ass explosion, sending Bumblebee flying backwards. All hands to combat! When we come to our senses, we do the super quick Halo Combat Evolved tutorial to make sure our senses is correct, which they always are because only weirdos and old people who grew up playing too much Wing Commander play with inverted controls. And then it's right into the action as we wield this beastly double barrel minigun. We shred down Decepticon scum. We're not even five minutes into this game and already we have amazing set pieces, cool cinematics, unforgettable music, great gunplay, and with insanely large weapons, basically every gun in this game is a BFG. On top of all of that, there's just so much attention to little details. Like when you swap your firing can, you get this cool animation. The level ends with us crawling towards Optimus Prime and Megatron in an epic showdown fighting on top of the ship, smoke and fire in the background as a result from the massive battle that rages on, with the two leaders going toe to toe. We leap forward and take a shot right to our chest as we sacrifice ourselves. Oh! That is how you do a tutorial level. And honestly, that's just the tip of the iceberg because from here on out, the game only gets better. Whether we're playing as Optimus Prime, using our amazing firepower to completely destroy our enemies. Hell, we even get to issue commands to Metroplex, which is beyond awesome. Metroplex, take out that war cannon. Consider it done.
Now, action pack levels are cool and all, but let's be real, during this time there were a ton of games with amazing gunplay and set pieces. I mean, this is the Xbox 360 and PS3 console generation. This gen gave birth to Gears of War and Uncharted. So Fall of Cybertron had to go a step beyond just being another third person shooter to be considered a true masterpiece. And it did, because this game constantly mixes up the gameplay and level design. We go from playing as Prime and just blowing up everything in our path to playing as Cliff Jumper, who has much more of a stealth and dagger approach as we cloak and sneak our way through enemy territory. And it's not just firepower and stealth that the game has to offer. There's sections where we play as a more of a agility mobile playstyle, as we get access to a grappling hook, allowing us to traverse through the levels and gunfights as if we're a Batman, if he used guns. Basically, the Thomas Wayne version of the Dark Knight. By the way, how do we never get that game? A Flashpoint Batman game? That would have been so sick. Imagine how gory and brutal that version of Batman would have been. Speaking of brutal, did I mention how violent Fall of Cybertron is? I mean, there's a section where we play as Grimlock, and instead of well and firepower, we're turned into a walking powerhouse, wielding a massive two-handed sword as we hack and slash and smash our way through dozens and dozens of enemies seeing their oil, which is basically their blood, go all over the place. Hell, we can even pick enemies up and rip them in half. You even get to turn into a giant space T-Rex. And stomp your way through your foes, completely overwhelming them with your incredible strength. And yes, in case you're wondering, you also get to eat them. And if you thought the gunplay, stealth, and melee combat was all this title had to offer, well, you would simply be wrong, because you can't have a Transformer game without, well, transforming. There are sections that offer some excellent car combat. In fact, there's one level where you play as the Decepticon Swindle, as you drive underneath this massive transport, as you strive to destroy the wheels from down below. Or how about take into the sky? as you transform into a jet or helicopter and battle your enemies from above. The game just has so much content and so many different variations of playstyle jam-packed into this 8-hour campaign. There's never a dull moment. Each level is specifically designed for the different characters you play as, as you get to utilize their abilities and strengths. And to make it even better, every playstyle feels incredibly balanced and just overall fun. And of course, it all leads down to the epic showdown between Optimus Prime and Megatron, the two head honchos of opposing factions in this massive civil war that has not only consumed, but basically destroyed everything around it. And you, the player, get to pick which your side you're going to play as. But let's be real, we all know, Optimus Prime would be the true winner of this amazing showdown. Well, let's switch gears and talk about the story and atmosphere. It's as if the developers knew that the kids who used to watch Saturday morning cartoons had grown up and now wanted something that both respected the legacy of the IP, but had grown and matured with us. And boy, did they deliver. I mean, just look what happens to Grimlock and the Dinobots. They made his character go from more of a big, lovable, goofy doofus that was way too strong for his own good. Be not stupid. Grimlock's smartest Dinobot of all. Unfortunately, that's probably true. I just wish all the Dinobots had more sophisticated brains. Brains? Grimlock know how to bash brains. Maybe bash yours. And turned him into more of a tortured soul. In this version, Grimlock and his team were turned into Dinobots against their will through extremely dangerous and painful experiments carried out by Shockwave. Grimlock's brain has been completely rewired 
causing him to struggle with his newfound rage and bloodlust. In fact, Shockwave even points out that he's amazed Grimlock has the ability to think clearly enough to even speak. Shockwave! I've siphoned your cerebral circuitry to push additional power to combat-related functions. Frankly, I'm amazed you can even talk. To make things even more dark, Grimlock remembers everything that was done to him. All the experiments carried out. Like I said before, they turned him into a tortured soul, struggling to hang on to any sanity he has left. What is all this? More ex experiments. Is this what Shockwave did to us? Cracked us open? You don't remember? Oh, do you? Yes. It's crazy to me how much content was packed into this eight hour experience. Every level, every character, every second in this game builds upon its lore and world. There's more content jam packed into this short campaign than most modern day 50 plus hour games. Transformers, Fall of Cybertron is just a perfect gem of a title. And that's not even getting into the awesome multiplayer that has sadly been shut down. But I would love to hear what you all think. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. By the way, if you made it this far and did enjoy the video, let me know by dropping a like. And if you are new, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon. As for me, I got a ton of work to do, so I'm going to get back to the grind and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.